Okay guys, so um, the recording is going, you should be all in the um, lecture.uni uh, channel because I'll be linking stuff there and we'll probably take some questions. Um, I'm going to start by uh, saying a few words about me for those of you who don't know me. I'm uh, Glassy, I live in the LSC. I uh, like PvPing a lot, I lead a lot of fleets as well in the uni. Um, and I also solo PvP a lot. I uh, like a, uh, to do small gang uh, PvP rather than bigger fleets, but uh, yeah. Um, and um, I'm not a, like an official teacher, so I don't really have, I don't know all the details or all the, well, syllabuses, all these classes. I'm, my, this class was triggered by, uh, a thing that I noticed in my fleets that uh, would be that we lose a lot of tackle and interceptors and scouts. Um, last night I led a fleet and we lost like three, all three of our interceptors in like first five minutes of the fleet. Um, a fleet before that I lost again like three interceptors just they died or something. So I thought, well, I should do a class, um, try to, you know, fix that or help with that. So that's why I called the class how not to die in an interceptor. And of course it doesn't uh, you know it doesn't apply only to interceptors. It's general uh, uh no, no general uh, uh information that applies to other you know other ships as well used for tackle and scouting like uh, uh attack frigates or uh P1 frigates or stuff like that. So uh, if you don't, uh, I've been asked if, if I come flying an interceptor, can I join you? Of course. Um, you don't have to be able to fly an interceptor to join and listen in. And, uh, the same principles apply to, uh, T1 frigates as well. Um, with that being said, um, I think we're ready to, uh, start, I guess. Um, Let's see, I tried to make a few notes um, just before the class. I, as I said, and I also said in the forum post, I am not a, you know, an official teacher. I don't really have a very organized and, uh, let's say, uh, syllabus or flow. So I'm, um, I like to do things on the spot, uh, you know, talk about things that I feel that I need to talk in no particular order. Uh, so... Um, yeah, don't expect this to be at the same standard as regular Uniflits. Um, right, so um, another thing, this is, I'm not going to teach you how to scout or how to uh, tackle. Um, those would be uh, different uh, classes and different uh, well, subjects. I'm trying to focus on how to survive while you're doing that or how not to die basically what you should avoid doing or how you should do something so you can save your ships and not die basically um yeah i'm not putting my my myself down i'm just setting the expectations um so i'm not uh, i'm really not uh very shy or um how should i say uh yeah, I'm not putting myself down. It's okay. Um, right. Um, so uh, this applies both to uh, well, um, scouts. We, we we make this distinction between scouts and tackle, but uh, in, generally in small gangs, uh, most often than not, scouts are also tackle or vice versa. Tackle gets to scouts. So even if you have like five tackle frigates, at some point, if, you, if three scouts die, even those uh, you know. Even those who are only tackle with a fleet will might actually get to scouting. So um, I use scout or tackle kind of interchangeable. So this applies to um, both skirmish scouts and tackle. Um, we are not for me. Scout is some interceptor or some fast figure that goes ahead and uh, looks for targets and eventually even uh, tackles them for the fleet rather than the uh, cloaky scout. That uh, those are more 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 often used in bigger fleets and uh, th that's a different story. So no practical, um, just uh, stay docked up and listen in. Um, right. So um, let's say 
Um, you are scouting for a fleet. You are an interceptor or an attack frigate. Uh, maybe I should say a, a couple of things about the interceptors. Uh, first of all, why I always say that interceptors are really good for scouting and tackling at our, uh, you know, the preferred ship if you can fly it, is that the interceptors have a bonus to uh, tackle modes, so they um, they have bonus to the range of uh, warp disruptor and scram. So without um, without any uh, without any links, you can get like uh, with interceptor five. I think you can get the the, the warp disruptors so of the point range 30k with overheat it is 36k, and then you can get the scram to five 13k. I think with uh, with uh, with heat and the 11k without it, so uh, that that allows you to orbit the target at a you know, larger range, so you don't actually you get scrammed. It's harder for you, for you to get scrammed and so on, or you can mitigate damage and so on. And the second best thing, or the second thing very important, is the seek reduction bonus um, that the interceptors get uh, when they're running their uh, micro dive, or uh, as opposed to uh, frigates. Uh, that, uh, is very, very useful. That means that it, it kind of, uh, with Interceptor 5, you're taking like a, at least half, uh, or less than half damage, uh, from bigger guns, like medium guns or big guns from bigger ships. Um, so, Interceptors are much better tacklers, uh, or yeah, tacklers for, than, uh, T1 frigates, but of course, if you can't fly interceptors or you can't afford it, T1 frigates are, are very good as well. And a good uh, piloted uh, T1 frigate is uh, better, in my opinion, than a well, badly piloted interceptor. Um, we're going to assume that you're flying an interceptor for now. This is just, a, let's say, use case or an example. So you're scouting for a fleet, you're ahead of the fleet, uh, and I'm going to try to cover up cover uh, some, you know, a few things that could happen or some situations that could happen where you might lose your ship. Remember that at this point you are scouting only, you're not engaging, there's no engagement or no, um, well, you don't have to tackle at this point. No battle going on. We'll cover that uh, later. There is no slides, this is just a talk. Um, and, yeah, there's no material. I might link some stuff, but uh, not... Uh, um, right, so the, the first and foremost thing that could happen to you when you're scouting your head for a fleet is, of course, jump into a gate camp. Um, I guess everybody here uh, know what the gate camp is, or uh, probably most of us died in uh, in a gate camp by, by maybe hundreds of times, I don't know. Um, it happens. Um, Oh, the big, uh, the big difference, uh, and the big advantage of interceptors in Nullsec especially is that they're immune to bubbles. And uh, so that means that they won't get dragged in a bubble or they won't, if, uh, Saber or something, if they're in a bubble, they will be able to just warp off. Whereas a frigate will have to uh, get out of the bubble so it can warp off. So, uh, that's, uh, kind of different because an interceptor, if he jumps into gate camp with a bubble, he, there's no install of course, he can just walk off, whereas a frigate uh, only have, can either crash the gate or burn or burn out of the bubble and walk off. So for a frigate, it would be much much harder to get out in this situation. So gate camps. Um, basically, you jump ahead of the fleet or wherever you jump, you jump in a gate camp, the ship's there, what do you do? Um, First of all, um, you report that to DFC. Uh, tell DFC that there's a gate camp, gate camp, whatever. He might actually, when saying this, is that he might actually say, okay, you hold your cloak, fleet is one jump out, uh, we're going to come and uh, you know, give you backup or support you, and you might actually hold your cloak and then uncloak when DFC tells you and go tackle something and he comes in and kills them or whatever, or even jumps the fleet in and they scatter and you... They save your ship, basically, if there's installers, right? Um, if that doesn't happen, if the FC does, can't or won't come and save you, whatever, won't support you, what how, what do you do, right? Um, you have three options, basically. Uh, first is to try to warp off. As I said, if you're in a bubble and you're in a frigate, that's not possible, right? If you're in the interceptor, you can warp off, even in bubble. Um, 
So you can simply warp off uh, at uh, Celestial, whatever, and then warp back at range if you need to give ice cadets or whatever. Um, but you have uh, to look and see if there's possibly any insta lockers there. Insta lockers is ships that can lock you within two seconds, or that would be your warp. Um, well, lock you faster, they say, than you can enter warp, so they can uh, point you and kill you. Uh, very common insta lockers are the Sfipple. I'll link it in uh, the chat and the Thrasher, right? Um, these are most common. Also, they sometimes they use like a, uh, a Griffin or they use Lojin, Losec, uh, a Scythe or a Osprey or uh, a T1 Frigate to re remote sensor boost them, right? So if you see uh, they have such a, you know, a bit of a dubious ship and if you see there's like some effects, uh, receivable effects, I'm not sure I have uh, a link for that. Trying to Google it. Um, yeah, I don't know. There is some visual effects that you can recognize the remote sim sensor booster. And if you see that, um, it's most likely that they are uh, insta lockers. So basically, it's most likely that they will catch you if you try to warp off. They will, they will be able to point you. Uh, in that scenario, I, I'd recommend not trying to warp off because you lose momentum and so on. So in that scenario, you have to um, uh, Phobos, I don't think it can be insta locker without any um, receivables. I'm not sure, honestly. But he, I think he even if he fills his mids with uh, with the receivables uh, with receivables, he might actually be insta locker. I don't know uh, for that. But um, right, so uh, Spipole fashions they can insta lock natively without any receivables. Uh, other ships can also install lock if they have brief symbols on them, or Sipple and Flasher can also install lock, or well, can enhance their install locking capabilities by having receivables applied on them by other ships. Um, right. Um, so, uh, in this scenario, you have to either crash the gate, crash the gate means uh, burn to the gate and jump back through, or uh, pull range, right? And you know, try to warp off. Um, for example, if there's several of them, uh, it's getting complicated. And I, if there's several of them, I'd suggest to try to crash gate. So basically, what to crash gate? What do you do, right? Um, you select the gate. This is where uh, shortcuts come in handy, right? Shortcuts. I have shortcuts, key sh keyboard shortcuts for activating my mods. And I also have keyboard shortcuts for activating heat on the mods, right? So, for example, I have F1, then F2, F3, or 4 for the, let's say, first row, where I have uh, F1 is my point, for example, F2 is my probe mode, and F3 or whatever. So F2 is my probe mode, right, my micro drive. And then on the corresponding keys, I have the heat, the heating button. So 1 is uh, heating my uh, point, 2 is heating my uh, probe mode, right? Um, so basically, this this is useful because you can execute this thing really quickly. Uh, so basically, what you want to do when you're crashing a gate, select the gate, click approach, click your hit hit mod uh, hit uh, your hit uh, key, for example, and then activate the pro mode, right? So what I do, I click approach the gate. Uh, I press two, then press F two. So basically, I'm going towards the gate, hit it. Um, if you uh, my probe drive and then I spamming jump. Um, this is the worst situation you can get yourself in with several insta locking like simple slashes and RT, RT, uh, especially these insta lockers are RT, so they, that means that they do a lot of damage at once, they have high alpha. And if they all hit you at the same time, they probably die, yeah. If there's only one or two of them, um, you have, you can look, right? You usually spawn like 12 or 15k from the gate. They usually sit at zero on the gate. That puts, uh, puts you outside of the scram range. They usually don't have scrams. They use points for, for tackle. So at this, if there's only two of them, you can either, or one of them, for example, you can either try to crash the gate or you can try to pull range and walk off, right? 
Um, you can try if, if there's one of them, for example, you can try to crash the gate. And if you don't want to, if you want to mitigate damage, you can try crashing the gate at an angle, right? So imagine that the gate is a is not a point in space, right? It's a sphere around the gate structure, right? When you click approach, your ship will start moving straight to the middle of that sphere or to the to this structure, right? But if you know, even if you like move uh, a bit like a t- tangent or with the sphere, right, at an angle, you will still get that zero on the gate. So um, there is a distance. I'm not sure what's the diameter of the of the sphere of the gate, but um, it's a few kilometers at, le- at least, I think, uh, depending on the gate, uh, whether it's a regional gate or a local. Uh, so if you double click in space somewhere to one of the edges of the gate, you will still burn and get that zero you know, within jump range of the gate, but you can use that to actually increase your transversal against the enemy ship, right? So, if, for example, if the enemy ship is sitting at zero on the gate, right, and in, let's say on the middle, if you burn straight to the middle, you'll basically burn, you'll be basically burning straight towards the enemy ship. That means that he can uh, having your you have your transversal very low, and he can uh, register like really good hits and might, might actually even alpha you, right, if it's an artist ship or something. However, if you increase, if you burn at an angle, but still burn towards the gate and, uh, you know, within, to, to, to get within jump range, you can increase your transversal and then he won't be hitting you that well. Um, so that's, that's a tip, right, for crashing gate. Uh, the same can be applied with uh, get burning out of... Uh, you know, if you're burning away from the from the install operator, you can also do that. So, for example, you land 10, 12, 15k from him, you pre-overheat, you know, pre-overheat your micro drive, double click in space at an angle, and then burn. And then once he drops point of view, if he has a point, you can warp off. Um, that is if if there's install operators, right? Of course, if there's no install operators, you can uh, just simply warp off. Um, it comes with experience, but usually it's people, specialists, they are good installers. Another thing, um, another thing that you have to look and uh, uh, kind of uh, be careful with is if they have webbing ships or uh, long range scram ships. Like uh, webbing ships are hyena, for example, you, usually used in gate towns. Succubus is sometimes used. Uh, these are frigates. Um, that can um, have long range webs and um, they also have, uh, there's other uh, webbing ships, but these, these, these guys have, since they're figures, they have a low, uh, well, or have high resolution scanners and they can look you uh, quickly. So, uh, for example, if there's a hyena on grid, he might actually get you double web before you can reach the gate. So you might at some point, at that point, you might actually be better off. Uh, trying to, um, well, work off directly or try to pull range and get outside of uh, point range um, and uh, work off, right? Because if you, in that scenario, if, if you try to crash the gate, it might actually web you enough so that the install locus can pop you. Um, there is uh, no slideshow. Um, right, so... Um, but most this this is these are the worst you know these are the worst uh, situations that can happen in jumping into a gate camp with install lockers. Most often than not, you will be jumping into gate camp or uh, of just a fleet or a gang or whatever they're sitting on a on a gate. They might not even be gate camping. Gate camping is uh, when you actually uh, they are designed to catch people on the gate. So they have install lockers, they have uh, receivers, they have webs and so on. Most often there's like gangs or fleets or whatever sitting on the gate about to jump in or whatever. Uh, that's the easiest scenario and then most often you will be able to warp off and then warp back at range or at a ping or whatever. So if you don't see, if it doesn't look like uh, there's a gate camp uh, and they don't have install like like staples and trashes and stuff like that, you can simply just warp off. Gate camps are usually a few people, they're no more like four or five at top 
of course you can get like gate cancer with plenty of people, but that's that, that those are not that usual. So like one, two, three, four, five people, uh, they're kind of more sus- suspect of gate camping than uh, a twenty man fleet. And also the ships they fly, if they fly like bigger ships and stuff like that, it is probable that they might not be gate camping. Um, so uh, the idea is you jump in if the, if it's uh, not not the uh, install lockers there. Report uh, to the FC and then warp off. Uh, the simplest way and then warp, you know, if you need to o- observe them or give in- intel and so on to the FC and uh, give eyes, you can warp back at range. Um, another thing you can do if there's no dangers of getting Insta locked or there's only yeah, like big or caught with webs and stuff like that or, and there's uh, mainly bigger ships that cannot catch you or kill you easily, you can also pull range. So uh, you jump in, there's a bunch of cruisers there, uh, you can pull range, like uh, overheat your microbe there, whatever, and burn away from them, but watch out so they're not, uh, they're not, uh, well, ranged or artifacts or something, so uh, they can pop you while you're pull, pulling range. So uh, that brings me to the next topic, and that would be, your transversal man- managing your transversal, but uh, let's take some questions before uh, before that. If there's any questions, I can use a break from talking as well. <laughs> um, June, you died. You died by trying to burn out twice. Did I took the wrong decision? Um, it depends what was on grid, I don't remember, but for example, um, if there's, uh, if you're burning away and there's stuff on the gate, uh, you should uh, be, you know, be careful what's on gate, right? Uh, things that can shoot, shoot you at range and that can do a lot of damage. First of all, there's RT ships. Um, and these are, RT ships are also called snipers, so you have to watch out for these guys. And I'm gonna link them. It's the tornado. Um, the na- well, the naga is not lucky, but this is not a sniper. So these guys are snipers. These guys can shoot up to like over 100 kilometers. So even if you're not on the gate, if you're like a city at a safe spot or a ping, watch out for these guys. They can, the naga can shoot up to 200 kilometers actually. Watch out for these guys. Um, as a rule of thumb, always if you're sitting at a, at a ping, always keep moving. Keep, first of all, be aligned in case something uh, combat scans you, like they can use a, a probe to combat scan you and warp on top of you, so then if you're aligned, you can just warp off when they land on you. Um, even better, if you're sitting like at a ping above uh, a gate or whatever and giving uh, intel to the FC, keep aligning or keep even moving with your probe mode on. So if you're aligning towards something with your pro mode and going 3, 4k a second, it's very hard for something to land on top of you and catch you, right? Because by the time they work, you'll be like 20k from them and then you can walk off. Also, um, if there's uh, this kind of sniper ships there, Tornado, Naga, Tempest, of course there's others, but these are the most popular and the best ones. Um, and you're like 100, 150 from them or something, or you can also get closer. Uh, do not burn straight away from them or straight towards them. So always burn at an angle at a, as close to perpendicular to their, let's say, to the uh, line between the two of you to increase your transversal so they don't hit you and instant pop you. Uh, this applies, of course, when you're tackling. This is basic uh, tackling or uh, maneuvers. Um, so when you're burning away, um, for example, if there's stuff like this, if you burn away, you have to kind of spiral. If you decide to burn away, you have to spiral out, basically. So if you remember the tackling uh, classes where they told you to spiral, how to spiral and ta- tackle something, basically what you want to do so you don't get like alpha by these things or uh, like long range ships, sp- spiral uh, away. Like when you're burning away, click in the middle of the screen and kind of maintain your uh, transversal up. Um, Besides those, there's also a couple of other ships that can uh, and usually fit RTs and they can also insta pop you. And of course, there's other uh, there's other um, ships that uh, like rails rail ships that can uh, do a lot of damage. Also, 
a Kerkos can do a lot of that. So if, if, if you jump and you run this five Kerkos there, don't try to burn away. Uh, uh, Kerkos range is uh, uh, 60k, and if they manage to lock you while you're still within that range, they can probably kill you pretty fast. Um, the, and also, you know, it, it depends uh, what's there. If and that's depending on what's the that's when you take a decision you wanted to burn or simply warp off or crash the gate. So, for example, uh, rail rail ships can project damage at, at range. So if you don't keep your transversal up uh, and you try to burn away, they will pop you. And I think uh, when you got popped once, it was some rail stuff that was there. I don't remember exactly. Uh, yeah, two seconds is the limit where you get uh, uh, caught, but uh, usually uh, interceptors, uh, well, fleet interceptors, if you fit an interceptor for tackling and, scout and stuff like this, you probably won't have an align time uh, of uh, less than two, two, you have an align time of more than two seconds, just because you need to fit some speed modes and a bit of tank and stuff like that, so then that means you don't have enough space to fit uh, bridge or uh, ice steps for, uh, to reduce your align time. Uh, exactly what Dagan says. Uh, right, so that, that's about, you know, when you're burning away. Um, and also this, this applies, as I said, when you're on grid with these kind of ships, long range projection ship, ships, uh, transversal. Transversal is a very important, um, transversal is a very, is a very important concept and a very important thing in the life of a tackler or a scout or a tackler mainly. Um, because you need to be on grid with, uh, long range ships like, uh, RT ships or, uh, rail ships or, yeah, lasers as well. Uh, you need to recognize those uh, ships, uh, that can project that range and keep your transversal up. Uh, do not approach them straight on, do not burn away straight on from them, burn, always burn at an angle and keep your speed up. Um, right. Um, any questions uh, about transversal and, and um, this? Okay, um, right, uh, uh, like uh, some few other tips and tricks, when you're sitting on a gate, um, it's a good habit to orbit it uh, without promote orbit it 500. If you see stuff coming in, um, uh, you know, keep your transversal up, it's, it's usually not very wise to stay within blapping range, uh, stay still within, you know, range of, uh, ships. Gen generally these, uh, these, uh, ships are tissues because they can, you know, they can blap you. If you're sitting at gate on a zero, they land there, uh, and you're not moving, they lock you up and they instantly kill you. You don't have time to jump. You're thinking, okay, I'm on the gate, if they shoot me, I jump. They will just shoot you and you'll die before you can jump. Uh, that's especially for Arty, and that's, I think, what happened to June uh, or some guy a couple of days ago in my place. There were some um, cinnables there. He was thinking zero, the cinnables worked uh, at the gate or something. He didn't jump through or didn't move and he just got popped. Uh, so if you're sitting on a gate, orbit it 500 per mods off. Um, and yeah, as I said, if you're like at range, keep burning, keep your transversal up. Uh, always, if you're also pull, pulling range, keep your transversal up, spiral out. Spiraling out is done by the way you, the same way you spiral in to tackle, but you're doing like moving away from a target and then you're double clicking uh, towards one side. Uh, to kind of keep up your transversal. So it's the same thing as spiraling in towards the target, but just spiraling out. Um, right. 
some other things when you're sitting at the things or starting like the, uh, is, uh, some other things that's important to uh, look out for is MJD ships like battleships, um, especially because ba- especially battleships they can lock you beyond 100k. So if you get locked up by a battleship at uh, 90 or 100k or something, uh, that's very, that's very dangerous. It, it can be a sniper battleships like a Tempest or Apocalypse or something, and they can pop you as well, shoot you at that range distance, or they can MJD on top of you, and if they're locked, the MJD land on you, spam you, and you're dead. So it's very important to watch out uh, around this um, this range of uh, 100, around 190, 110 kilometers. That's uh, they can MJD on top of you and scram you and wipe you and kill you. Um, so you need to, I suggest if you don't sit around there or if, if you're sitting there at that distance, uh, at least keep moving with the pro mode on. But even then, don't sit at that range. Watch out there. Also, uh, somewhat less dangerous but still dangerous are the command destroyers. They can MJD themselves and other ships on top of you. And if you're sitting still, um, that they cannot look you at that distance. But uh, maybe they can MGD the other ships that can, uh, and then they will insta scram you, or they can MGD on top of you and then lock lo- 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 you up there and kill you. So uh, watch out for those guys as well. And it's good thing if you're around 100 kilometers from uh, this kind of ships, it's good to move on and keep moving and preferably get either a bit closer or a bit further than 100 kilometers. Um, Right. Um, E-Fire, it's um, okay, thanks for coming. Uh, I will uh, put up a recording of the whole thing uh, somewhere, so it's okay. You'll, uh, you'll still get some info. Uh, so this is, these are the, let's say, some tips and tricks and advice and uh, about uh, when you're scouting, basically. When you're uh, giving guys, the FC tells you, I need eyes to that, about that thing about that leader sitting on the gate and you um, go get there and you know jump into them and whatever and you need to get eyes. Uh, until now we haven't actually engaged that fleet. We are just providing intel, right? Uh, another thing, if you're warping somewhere or like, for example, you see some stuff on this scan um, or uh, if you walk to a, like, yeah, and some, somehow you walk to the station at a hundred or something, you walk to a belt or something and you happen somehow to land right on top of them, of the fleet. You know, if there's a big fleet, if you land right on top of them, um, if you're not there to engage them, to tackle them or whatever, simply warp off. Um, most likely, even if they have uh, fast-looking ships, they might not expect you warping there and they won't be prepared. It's not like they're sitting on a gate and someone on the other side calls them that you're jumping into them or something because gate campus usually have eyes um, telling them that and then they just stay prepared to, to lock you up. So uh, if they're not prepared, they probably won't initiate the lock in the first second and you're free to go. Um, if there's a big ship like you land at zero on a, on a battleship or even a cruiser, um, and if it's only one or two of them or something that cannot lock you really fast and uh, catch you, uh, you can also try to pull range in the same way, you know, just pull range and uh, yeah. But uh, don't get, you know, for example, it has happened to me that. Uh, there was one of my scouts, I told him, well, go get eyes on, on me. I knew that there was a fleet on a gate, go get eyes on that gate, they tell me what's there. And he walked to 100 of the gate, he had no tacticals, and he landed right on top of a big fleet, right? What he did, he tried to pull range, but of course there's that many of them, characters and stuff like that, some interceptors that pointed him, and yeah, he died pretty fast. If he, if he simply walked off and then, you know, came back or whatever at a different angle or different range or at the gate as you and so on. Uh, that wouldn't happen. Um, generally, as an interceptor, you're pretty safe. Um, you should, uh, if you're doing, you know, if you're not making mistakes and you're doing things you know, properly, you should not die. Uh, it's, you know, if you're scouting, uh, unless you're, you know, if you're not engaging, it's, you shouldn't, you shouldn't die, of course. 
uh, well, it, it has happened <laughs> to all of us today. I died uh, by stupid, by just not paying attention that I was sitting at the thing above a gate and the line somewhere, but I didn't notice an interceptor walking all, out to me. He had a tactical near me and I didn't notice him. Uh, and he tackled and, cra- and killed me. Uh, once I was also like uh, sitting on a station, uh, giving intel to the FC with a, uh, there was a, like a redeemer or some uh, Black Ops battleship there. Uh, and on the station, I was I was actually on the station zero about to dock up, but I stopped outside to give uh, give intel to the FC that there's a battleship there and link his name. He locked me and he started pop. It happens, but um, you know it's. Um, if you're doing things right, then you should be pretty safe. If you walk into a gate at zero, there's a fleet there, jump through. Don't don't be afraid of jumping uh, through the gate or into an enemy fleet unless, you know, they have this, like, five st- install of staples or something. That, that might be a bit uh, annoying. But generally, I'd say 90% of the cases, uh, if you jump into an enemy fleet, you're pretty safe to just warp off. Okay. So um, this is this kind of covers, let's say, uh, the scouting part, or just before the engagement. After after this, we're going to start talking about uh, the actual engagement and when you actually have to tackle and keep point and so on. Uh, unless, yeah, I might actually some of the things might pop my mind. I might remember something that I should have said here that I didn't, and I'll uh, make a parenthesis there. But uh, if there's any questions so far, guys. Uh, yeah, question? Yeah. Um, uh, say you don't have any tacticals uh, and uh, you, know, you want to make some, uh, you know, do you have time to drop a tack, uh, you know, 100k off and then warp out? Um, what do you mean drop a tack? Well, 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 I mean, if you're, like, say you, you go to a gate at 100 and you want to just drop a bookmark and then go you know, warp out and then go back 100 from that to get a tactical at 200. And as you go in, you notice that there's a big fleet that you dropped in the middle of. Yeah, well, it can happen. So if you drop in the middle of a fleet, for example, you just walk off. That's the best thing. Uh, but I usually, if you want to do a, a, like a tactical, just walk 200 and then burn... Um, burn away, on, on, of course, unless there's dangerous stuff. Uh, but... You know, if you're warping to a gate at 100 and then you want to make a tactical there, from that where you landed, just burn somewhere, you know, in no no direction with a celestial or something up, down somewhere, where kind of at an angle away from the gate, and then drop the tactical at 200 or whatever. Uh, most likely, if you're flying an interceptor or a, very fa- or a fast frigate, uh, it will take you less time to burn 100 kilometers than to actually warp off and then warp back in at a, another range. And then also remember that it's it's recommended that book marshal things and stuff they are not um, they are not in line with any celestial. Basically, that is not a very good thing or very good tactical uh, that you're doing by warping and warping off because even though it's 200 away from the gate, it's actually in line uh, with another celestial that you walk off to unless you walk to a different celestial, you know. So for example. Well, if you're working from the station or a planet, whatever, at 100 to the gate, then you walk back to the planet and walk again at 100 to a bookmark, uh, that's a not, not a very good tactical. Yeah, well, usually I make an unaligned safe first and then uh, warp to the gates from that. Yeah, that's also an option, but I think uh, the, the simplest and the, the easiest way, in my opinion, is to work walk to the gate to 100 and then start burning at a random direction in line with nothing until you're 200 or whatever you want and then drop a bookmark there. Or you can even do that by warping straight from the gate. Uh, you don't really have to warp. I mean, these ships, they can go like 4K a second or something. And that's what, 4K a second, there's like, what, uh, less than a minute to burn, burn uh, Burn 200 kilometers. Uh. Right. Uh, any other questions, guys? Well, uh, I'm gonna give you two minutes to think of them until I get a glass of water, which I forgot to get. 
and uh, think of them, and then uh, when I'll be back in one minute, I'll, uh, I'll answer some more, and then we move on to the next part where I was talking about uh, engagements and packing and more exciting stuff. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Any questions that pop to your mind um, while I was gone? Okay. Um, no questions. I guess that everything that uh, I said makes sense. I kind of doubt that, but <laughs> let's move on. Um, right. So. Um, those were a few ideas or tips and uh, how to survive and you know, how to stay safe um, while you're uh, scouting for a fleet. Uh, now we're going to talk about actual tackle, um, actual tackling. Uh, so you're an interceptor or a T1 frigate, and you're uh, you know the fleet. Um, yeah, fleet engages something, and you're uh, you're there to provide tackle. Um, of course, you can, as a scout, it is often uh, it often happens that the the FC will send you in first to get the um, to get point first, and then especially if there's like single ships that you can uh, tackle, like raptors or whatever, and then bring the fleet in to kill it. So that. Um, that's a kind of a particular case of tackling, but uh, we're going to try to cover the fleet engagement or gang engagement, like bigger engagement, not like only you and another ship there. It's like several other ships and it's you and your fleet there. Uh, so uh, first thing, um, as a tackler, in my opinion, especially as, you know, when you're... Uh, when you're fighting a gang or fleet or multiple enemies, manual piloting is uh, one of the most important uh, things to concepts and the uh, skills that you need to practice. Basically, what my, manual piloting means, uh, kind of manually uh, positioning your ship, right? So. Um, you usually do this by double clicking in space uh, and to adjust your ship ship uh, uh, movement direction. Uh, basically, you need to <coughs> you do manual piloting to avoid getting caught and still keep uh, your within your range, uh, your tackling range of the your main tackle target, for example. So if the FC calls something a primary or whatever, and uh, at some point you need to tackle something. Uh, if you click the automatic orbit, that automatic orbit might actually, if you're fast enough, will keep you outside of scan range of your main target, of the tag target that you're tackling, like you're orbiting 20k, you're safe, but your manual orbit might actually take you within uh, the danger zone of other ships there, right? So, uh, if that's the case, and it often is, 
you have to actually take control of your ship and double click in space and kind of uh, stay within <laughs> your uh, point range of your primary uh, but outside of a uh, danger zone of the other ships and the other ships danger zone I'm going to try to define it later but you know you can imagine like uh, that DPS range of the other ships uh, scram range of the other ships webs uh, newts and so on a lot of nasty stuff uh, on grid uh, can be on grid uh, for an interceptor so you need to know and uh, avoid that <clears throat> so uh, manual piloting um, is not necessarily manual orbiting is one thing that's uh, more advanced and a more specific um, a case of manual piloting, but that's not only that. So manual piloting also moving your ship, positioning your ship generally. Um, an intermediate step, and if you want, you can still maintain like an automatic orbit by clicking orbit of the primary, but then be ready if you see your ship moving too close from the uh, from some dangerous ships, be prepared to take control and double click and kind of adjust your trajectory. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to teach you how to manual pilot, but uh, as a, a good a good interceptor pilots uh, should be good at this. Um, another thing <coughs> that's um, a good skill to have is overheating in terms of not the actual in-game skill, but to know once you overheat. So if you're a uh, for example, uh, orbiting with your point range and orbiting 20k, but then at some point you're getting too close or you have to adjust your orbit and move a bit further away to avoid some stuff. Um, it's a good thing to know how to estimate and how to foresee that and pre over, you know, overheat your uh, point range, for example, point for extra range, for example, overheat your uh, uh, microbe drive to outrun run the <coughs> dangers or drones, for example. For example, you're, you're orbiting something and then there's light drones on you. By overheating your uh, microbe drive, you increase your speed and you can mitigate damage from drones. Um, yeah, of course, you cannot uh, keep it perma overheated by a few, but a couple of cycles at least, you'll have higher speed, you'll mitigate more damage from the drones and hopefully your primary will die by then or someone will get secondary tackle and you'll have to burn off and uh, burn back in. Um, right, so um, that's a good skill to have. Uh, very important is to know your tackle range. Um, so you know, you should know what's your tackle range without hit and what's, what your point range without, uh, with and without hit. So for example, with interceptors, as I said, uh, interceptor 5, you have 30 kilometer point range, 36 uh, with heat. Uh, that's a big difference, uh, 6 kilometers, so you should uh, use heat when needed. Uh, if you have links, you also, you should also check, uh, it can get like, like 40 something kilometers, so links are very useful. <coughs> and you should, um, always know your ship's capabilities. Of course, also, um, Speed, knowing your speed is important, but uh, it's uh, slightly less important because you don't, I mean, you kind of feel that you don't have to know, oh, my ship is doing 4,637 meters. It's, that is not very useful information because there's, you know, you don't, very rarely do you have to actually chase a, a guy in straight line and uh, that's when you might come in useful that, oh, my ship is doing uh, this much and his ship is doing that much, I can catch him or not. Um, most often than not, even if he's a, there's a ship faster than you, uh, you can uh, still catch him if you manual pilot and adjust to kind of cut him off, you know. So if you see where he's going, you cut him off and uh, get him or vice versa, uh, you can get caught even you know, if you're not... If they cut you off and you don't react to that. Um, so, uh, as I said, manual piloting. Manual piloting comes in, comes uh, hand in hand with, uh, or for, actually more important than manual, like um, 
more, very important when you're tackling for a fleet and you're in a battle. Generally, when you're in a battle, but as a tackler, is uh, very important is to keep your situational awareness. Um, you need to know where you are, where your enemy is, uh, how the enemy is situated, spread out where the certain ships are, and also where your fleet is and so on. Um, so you need to know the battlefield. And, you know, as a consequence to that, to that, uh, you, if you need, you need to see where your ship is in relation to the enemy and then notice if you're getting, uh, closer to the enemy and start manual piloting and to avoid getting scammed and wet. So, uh, situational awareness, I should have started with this. This is, uh, the most important thing generally in PvP and this, like, High speed, kite, long range things, uh, situation awareness, situational awareness is key. If you, uh, know where you are when the enemy is, you can make decisions, you can uh, kind of foresee different events and you can react to them. Whereas if you're only looking at your overview, your overview is part of situational awareness, doesn't give you full situational awareness. I would argue actually it doesn't give you a lot of situational awareness, it only gives you the whatever is on grid, and it gives you the distances. It doesn't really give you... Well, you can enable different columns there to see, like, uh, radial velocity, whatever, to see if, like, if the thing is moving towards you or you're moving towards him. But I wouldn't rely on the overview other than actually see what's on grid and how far they are from you. Um, I generally like to rely, rely on the uh, screen of, I don't know, battle... As, um, the, how do you call it? Battle scene or whatever, well, in space, where you see the icons and ships in space. And um, what I like to do is enable my tactical overlay by con- pressing Control D. And that gives you a plane uh, with concentrical cir- circles. Um, Maybe I can give you a link to the world to know what I'm... Uh, but if you Google tactical overlay, actually, you will find uh, what I'm talking about. So you can do the Googling yourselves. And not gonna, but enable the, I like enabling the tactical overlay because it gave, gives, you, gives me a plane of reference, right? So it helps me estimate, uh, kind of helps me grasp the 3D space that the battle is happening in. So it gives me... Um, a good idea. The concentric circles allow, give, give you distances from 10 to 10 kilome- kilometers and they give me a sense of the distance from me uh, towards the different uh, objects and ships. And it also gives me a sense of, of, of uh, space, as in it has like a plane and then it gives me uh, kind of gives me an idea what ships are above me, below and in the 3D space. So, um, using that and uh, looking at the actual layout of the battle and in space, I think, uh, is the best way to achieve or to be aware of your situation or like, achieve situation awareness. Um, and it's important to try to, to always know what's happening and, you know, focus on everything basically to see what, you know, where you are, where the enemy is. If you see like an enemy interceptor coming right, right at you, you need to, you want, you might notice it or you might not notice it on the overview because there's like 10 ships there, uh, and they're like switching all over depending on the distance. If you have them sorted by distance or you don't know, you know, the direction, the, the overview doesn't give you the direction he's burning. He's only keep, gives you distance from him, but you don't know what angle or direction, but it's much easier to notice it in space. And if you see he's burning at Q, you have to kind of adjust your um, piloting by double clicking space or whatever to burn away and avoid getting tackled and scrambled so on. Or vice versa, you notice a ship that's isolating and you can go in and uh, burn in and get a point or whatever. Um, so all, uh, coupled with this um, uh, um, overlay, um, uh, is zooming in and out. So you should zoom in and out depending on how, uh, <coughs> what your needs are. So when you zoom out, I like, I like to look at the scene zoomed out or, well, not maximum, but so you can see everything or zoom in and out, zoom out, see the, the, like where everyone is. And then you can also zoom in when you're starting getting closer to something and orbiting and so on. So, uh, this is very, uh, 
uh, useful and try a lot of, of course you need to a lot of practice to to kind of keep your calm and keep uh, you know, keep your awareness and don't lose uh, tunnel vision don't lose your situation awareness the moment when you lose situation awareness um, things can happen. You can get too close to something that can scam you. Uh, you can get or something like an intercept. You can get too close to you, burn at you, straight at you. You don't notice him. As I said, he scams you and they kill you. Um, all things happen. So seeing how everything is locating, what kind of noticing what everyone is doing, where they're burning, how fast they're going, and so on. And um, then let's say the more you can do this, the better, or the better can, you can do this, the more successful you'll be and the less uh, you'll die or lose. And this, of course, doesn't always apply, doesn't only apply to tackling and interceptors, it applies to pretty much all the high speed uh, range trip battles. And when you're kiting, you do the same thing as well. Like if you're in a slice and you're fighting with some other guy or guys, uh, you basically the, the same thing applies if you're in a small gang and you're doing like the small gang Tuesdays day that I run I'm always talking about this in my fleets and trying to basically saying the same things that I'm saying now uh, so situation awareness, manual uh, piloting overheating and knowing your ships, your ship another just not necessarily connected to this but just another like tip uh, and a note, you can also use, if you notice them and react fast, you can use warpings to reposition yourself on the grid. So you, you can, but at some point you need to reposition to get closer or further away from the enemy. So like, uh, if you're uh, in a kiting gang or fleet, uh, a battle can stretch for hundreds of kilometers with different ships at different ranges and so on. And then you can, uh, for example, if uh, you see a ship isolating or something, you can use a warp in like a, if you have a bookmark or you can use wrecks, you can use uh, bubbles, anchored bubbles in all sec, uh, beacons or station uh, structures or whatever. I don't know. It depends on the whatever is on the grid. But try to remember that you can also use this to reposition your ship. You don't have to burn 150, 200 kilometers. If you're in warp range, you can reposition your ship closer or further away from your objective. Um, yeah, you can work to wrecks. So, if, for example, if you killed or your ship, your fleet killed uh, another enemy ship or whatever, there's a wreck there, and if you're like more than 150 kilometers from it, you can work to it. Also, remember that you can, um, you don't, this is very important if you, people, you, you don't have to work at zero. You can work, for example, you can work to anywhere from 10 to 100 kilometers, right? And uh, this is not necessarily for, for example, you can reposition even with a slow cruiser or something, for example. Uh, if there's a ship uh, 100 kilometers from you, right, and there's a wreck behind him, like uh, 150, you can walk to the wreck at uh, 50 and you land right on top of him. Um, so... <laughs> Stuff like that. So you can remember that you can work at different ranges to the different, you can work at ranges. So you can also move like, you can move only 50 kilometers on the grid as well. By, if there's an object 150 kilometers from you, if you work to the object at 100, you'll move 50 kilometers. Uh, so remember these things as well. Um, new default ca camera settings, fine. Um, well, let me undock. I'm not sure I'm, what I'm using. I, uh, I didn't really change my um, my thing. It, uh, I haven't really explored the camera that much. But for example, I use um, I use I'm using by some reason I don't know, but I'm using the Orbit camera um, by default. The tactical overlay, so Control D, um, and then. Um, Auto tracking is nowadays we see, but you can, I guess you can probably use the field, uh, field view, the tactical camera, the button, uh, the button above that. I'm, haven't, I haven't, I can't really, I haven't really experimented that much with this, but, um, 
I haven't really noticed a huge difference between the two views, to be honest. Um, right. Um, any questions? Um, if I missed any questions, guys, you can ask again. Maybe I missed something in the free chat, but um, any questions so far? Okay. Um, well, if you have questions, uh, you can type them in a fleet in the sorry in a, the channel, the chat channel, and I'll try to answer them. If I uh, miss them or you see that the stop scrolling and I'm not coming to the question, uh, ask them again. And of course, feel free to ask it on comms as well. That's um, because I might miss it. Uh, I try to. I'll, I'll take questions on the go. So. Um, I'll try to answer it uh, sooner. Um, right. Um, my plan. So this this is I mean, it's kind of hard, or is a lot of stuff that you need to do. So it takes a lot of experience and a lot of practice to actually be good and uh, survive and do your job as a tackler um, very well. Um, on grid with all these kind of dangers and what I'm going to now, now I'm going to try to enumerate and talk a bit about different uh, ships that are specifically dangerous for you as a tackler and uh, you know, after this section you will probably be very discouraged and it will look very scary and stuff like that but uh, with experience and practice it will be, get better um, just um, short note here um what we're going to talk about is um, if I use the uni overview. Uh, no, I don't. Um, I don't even know. I don't think so. I have. Um, I have made my own uh, overview, but I, I have like one overview that I use for everything. I I don't even switch, which is kind of bad. I don't switch to my portable view, so I. I have an overview for PVP where I see all enemy ships. I have. I see stations. I see. Gates, I see beacons, uh, like plexus infection warfare or big uh, other type of beacons. Uh, I see the sun, and that's pretty much what I see on that overview. Um, and then I have another overview where I use for this scan that I see belts, and uh, I have ships and belts uh, on it, uh, planets, and all the celestials that that I use for this scan. I have another overview, the same as the PvP one, where I only have friendlies. Um, and I have another one for, uh, well, for uh, wrecks and drones, um, in case I need to, I switch to kill drones if I'm hunting some, someone, or, uh, yeah, to loot wrecks as well. By the way, um, when you're, uh, this thing just popped my mind out since I mentioned the drones. Another way to mitigate damage and uh, to um, um, kind of extend the, the how long you can sit on a grid is then if you're tackling something and he puts uh, light drones on you because most ships have them and most of them they're not, you're, you'll be uh, uh, chased by them. You can if you're in an interceptor with some guns or, for example, malediction with light missiles or something that you have some guns, you can sh shoot your drone, shoot the drones. So basically, if you kill the drones or some of them, you'll take less damage and you'll be able to stay on grid and tackle longer, right? Um, that's just a tip. Um, as opposed, I mean, if you shoot them primary, your DPS won't, won't matter that much. Uh, depends on what the... Um, well, your fleet does and so on, but just a, 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 a thing to think of. Right, so now we're going to talk a bit about different ships that are um, especially dangerous for you when you're on a uh, grid, like when there's a battle and you're fighting, uh, your fleet is fighting and you're tackling and zooming around there. Um, oh, first of all, uh, before that, um, let me uh, talk a bit about when you should go for tackle and when you should not, right? right. Um, as an interceptor, for example, um, your main job should be to tackle, right? But for example, imagine this. 
your fleet, you're in a fleet, not a small gang or something. Just imagine you're in a fleet, 30 man fleet, you're fly, fighting a 30 man character fleet. Um, I would not go near that character fleet whatsoever in an interceptor, unless the FC specifically tells you to, right? Um, I would actually sit at the ping, ready to warp in. Uh, if there's some warping, warping available, or otherwise I'd sit outside their uh, missile range that would be outside 60k from the tackles and get ready to get in, delve in, and get, uh, get tackling if, in case they want to warp out. That's just because they will simply eradicate you in like two seconds and if they switch to, right? There's no point. If they're sitting there, they're fighting your fleet, there's no point of you getting there within your missile range or damage range or whatever because they will kill you and you don't, basically you're not adding any value since they're already in grid and, on grid and uh, uh, fighting. So your role in a fleet battle comes in either by providing warpings before the fleet and so on. So that means like strategic warpings so the fleet, your fleet, the FC can reposition your fleet, warp to you or whatever to land closer, further away from the fleet, yeah? And then afterwards when the, for example, if they decide to bail, they warp off you and when you see them warping off, you can warp, either warp in if you have a warp in, like a wreck or something, or a delve in with the overheating pro mode and scram and get tackled and you know, catch one or two, whatever, and kill them. Um, in the middle of a big fleet, there's really no, you know, um, no reason for you to be there at zero on them or very close to them. Uh, this also applies to like um, uh, brawling. So if there's if your ship is brawling and scram range within other ship, there's no reason for you to get there <laughs> in scram range or. I'm going to talk about this later as well. But when you're tackling and when you're um, scouting in the interceptor, it is very few cases when you want to get within scram range, right? Um, you don't... Most most people do when it comes to tackling and then this is the this um, bad concept that I, I hate. Uh, most people just go in, ram, or like click approach on the target, over this uh, uh, micro drive, get on top of the target, scram, Point him or scram web if they have a tackler should not have scram web. They should have a point and optionally a scram. Um, scram web and then they go oh, scram web and then two seconds afterwards they're dead. Um, this is called hero tackle in the uni and it's a really bad and uh, I'd say really bad and uh, I don't know what uh, epithet to find but um, yeah, bad concept. There is no such thing as uh, hero tackle. Uh, the, the tackle, uh, the hero tackle, is the one who does his job and survives to do it again. Um, when I'm leading a fleet, I don't want my scout to get hero and die in the first five minutes of the fleet or whatever, because then he'll leave me. Especially if I'm roaming in deep no sec or whatever, he'll he'll leave me stranded with no eyes there. Um, Hero tackle is the only concept I would apply. Hero tackle is like there's a there's a shiny ship and the fleet is chasing and then he's about to escape from the fleet or he's faster or whatever and then the tackle goes in and that knowingly and willingly sacrifices his ship to actually uh, give the the fleet or the, the shiny a kill right. But not even then. There's actually there's actually uh, ways to do it without actually getting your self killed. So I repeat, there is no such, such thing as hero tackle. Uh, your first job would be to survive, then to tackle as a tackle and intercept or intercepted pilot. So your first job survive. If you're dead, you're not no use. Survive and then tackle. If you see that uh, keeping point on something will, will lead to dying, uh, don't do it unless you're sure that uh, by you dying it will uh, actually 
and ensure that the fleet will get the shinier kill. And even then, it might be worth it, might not be worth it. But first job, survive, then uh, tackle. If you're taking damage, get out, pull range, warp off. Uh, this is also something that is important. When you're, see, when you're seeing that you're taking damage uh, and you're not tackled, simply you know, align and warp off. Uh, it is a good thing to, if you're manually piloting and you're zooming, uh, you have situation awareness and you, zo- you can zoom, zoom in and see where your ship is kind of heading and try to pick up from the space, try to pick up a celestial that's somewhat in the, or close to the direction that you're burning and then walk to that thing. Um, whereas, uh, if you just randomly pick a port saver thing, it might be something that is right behind you, and then your ship will have to, book, to stop and um, turn around and warp off. That, um, first of all, takes longer, and uh, you might pop. Second, it drops your speed, and drones can catch up to you and kill you. Third, it drops your transverse, and you can get popped by uh, stuff shooting at you. So, um, yeah, just the thing. But uh, coming back, there's no such thing as fatal tackle. Uh, it's rule number one is to survive and then, then do your uh, your job. There's no use uh, to me as an FC if uh, one of my scouts just dies. Um, right, that wasn't actually this this this, uh, this was a very important thing I wanted to cover in this thing, but I forgot to put it on my notes here. Uh, but yeah. Um, Hero tackle is a big no-no in my opinion. Um, uh, you, as you, uh, from what I've been talking about now, uh, you will see that um, being a good uh, tackle, tackler, and um, uh, scout is not that easy, and is not like uh, it's uh, in my opinion is one of the most uh, difficult or complicated um, jobs in EVE and uh, it's definitely not um, you know, not that easy for new bros to, to fulfill. Of course uh, it's easy to get in the tackle ships for new bros but it's not that easy for them to perform well, right? So uh, the thing like new bro tackle is you know a lot of people see it as cannon fodder, right? So they say, oh, we need new bro tackles, and then you get 10, 10 new bro tackles that just go and swarm the enemy, and then they just die like flies. Uh, I would argue that a, a well-flown interceptor pilot, or even a T1 figure, uh, would count as much as all those 10 uh, new bros. So... If, yeah, I don't want to discourage no, new bros. It's actually there's different way to to do it, right? So you can either do it uh, professionally, let's say, or you can you know throw numbers in it and uh, solve the problem. So, I don't know. Uh, it's a uh, it's a matter of uh, what you get and uh, what you have. We don't really we don't really have a lot of uh, good uh, interceptor pilots in the uni or scouts tacklers in the uni. So. Just because it takes a lot of manual piloting and a lot of uh, experience with task stuff and the kite stuff and the uh, <laughs> unis are not the experience with kiting and all that. Right. Um, yeah, so I kind of divagated a bit from the my plan here. Um, I was going to talk about uh, ships that are dangerous for you on grid, but uh, let's take some questions maybe before if. Uh, they piled up. No, no. Okay, do I still have people in my room? Oh yeah, definitely. Cool. Seems like, yeah. Pretty quiet. quiet. We are on board, don't worry. Yeah. Okay, guys, so let's... um, Actually, give me one minute to go get another glass of water because I ran out of water, and then I'll come back and we'll talk about ships, which is uh, fun and uh, scary, in my opinion. 
uh, now that I put them on a big list uh, here, it's even scary for me how many there are, but uh, we'll talk a bit about that. Okay, um, so, uh, right, this is, uh, this comes with the, um, with the experience, so it's hard if you're a new bro to beginning and you don't have a lot of experience in PvP and DIV in general, it's hard to remember all these ships and what the, the bonuses are and um, all that, but a good PvP pilot and a good interceptor pilot generally, a good pilot and experienced pilot will not only know what all the ships do, but they will all, all know the bonuses uh, of each and will know, for example, what the point range or the scram range on a Razu is, uh, or for Hiti the Razu is, or the faction, or what, what the faction, what the, the range of a faction web on a rapier is, uh, what the, the new range of uh, Armageddon is and so on. So he will know those things and he will always keep that in mind. So I'm, I'm going to try to uh, talk about a, a bit about each group of ships. So basically there's three, besides, of course, the regular uh, DPS ships that can do a lot of damage to you, because this I haven't listed here in my list here, but uh, I should say a few words. Uh, DPS ships that are especially dangerous for you as a interceptor, uh, as in they can project damage very well to you and they can do a lot of damage to you. Is first and foremost is rapid light missiles, right? And um, give me one second so I can link that. Just a second, guys. Sorry, I just remembered about this. I I should I didn't put this in on my list. Okay, guys. Sorry. Uh, so, rapid light missile ships are at the moment the kind of the cancer of uh, figures generally and tackle interceptors and uh, yeah, tackle in general. For someone, for some reason, it gave me an error that my note is too long. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, so, um, rapid light missiles is, you know, the most common, although you should have heard of the Caracal, of course, and uh, here are the uh, another less common ship that is uh, also um, has rapid light missiles. But the belly cause of these guys, the rapid light missiles is they they can shoot, the Caracal can shoot up to 60 something kilometers and the rapid light missiles will apply a lot of damage to you and are very very dangerous because they can uh, kind of uh, kill a, an interceptor in a few volleys. These are two other um, uh, mi uh, rapid light uh, missile ships that are often uh, common. Uh, side field issues, grenade issues, I don't think they have bonuses to uh, uh, rapid light missiles. 
um, uh, like in terms of range, so they're like shorter range than the Caracol. So all these three have a shorter range, but they still hit up to 40 kilometers or something with the uh, rapid lights. And then you have the Cerberus, which can hit up to 100 kilometers with rapid lights. It's, it's really dangerous. And then you have the Orthrus, which is also very dangerous. It's fast. It has a long scram, a bonus to, to tackle. And, um, yeah. So these these are shields that you have to uh, you know watch out for in terms of damage. They can do a lot of damage to you. They can project project a lot of damage to you. Um, and it's really no way to mitigate. You, you can mitigate some of that damage by um, by um, keeping your speed up, like going fast. Uh, but uh, it's not gonna it's not gonna of much here. So the idea is that uh, you should stay outside of their missile range to know the missile range of each one of them and stay out of them or yeah, if you take damage from them just warp off, you know. Um, the, the, the turret base ships are um, the turret base ships you can mitigate damage from them by um, by keep your transversal up the drone ships you can uh, mitigate a lot of damage from drones by um, keeping the speed up, so they're not that dangerous, or in time they can wear you down, but they can't kill you that fast, as fast as the rapid light and missile ships. Um, right, so uh, besides this, this is DPS, so DPS ships that you need to uh, uh, look out for. Uh, DPS um, is one thing that you need to uh, pay attention to. The second thing um, is uh, long scram ships, right? So it's DPS ships. Uh, of course, they are dangerous because they can kill you. Then long scram ships, ships that can scram you at uh, range. Of course, uh, a lot of uh, scram ships can scram you. Like the, you should know that. Yeah, the, the range of a scram is nine k. Um, with it is uh, 10k, uh, with uh, uh, links it's 13k hit it, so try to stay outside of that. Um, also webs are dangerous, name, like name, standard webs on standard ships, they can go uh, to 13k with hit and with, uh, with links they can go up to 15k. So basically you need to stay within uh, 10 to 15k, or let's say outside, don't get closer to 15 or something uh, k from uh, ships generally. Um, these are the standard ships, right? But then you have long, long uh, scram ships, ships that uh, uh, can has a bonus to to scrams, and they can scram you at range. Uh, generally point, if you're pointed is not, it doesn't really matter to you at all as an interceptor because, uh, yeah, it stops you from warping, but your speed should, uh, should allow you to, um, kind of burn out of point danger and warp off if you want to. Um, that's not dangerous. So dangerous is if you get, if there's anything that actually stops your mobility, so slows your ship down. So that would be, uh, scrams, webs and newts basically. Um, webs they web you and newts they don't directly uh, slow you down but if your capacitor is dry then your microbe will shut shut down and uh, you won't be able to move uh, fast anymore. So um, these are basically the three groups of uh, ships that are very dangerous for you uh, besides the DPS ships that can kill you is long scram ships, they can scram your range, uh, long uh, webs and uh, newts, right? So let's, we're gonna take take them, uh, well, we'll talk, we're gonna talk about each of these groups uh, uh, one by one. So long scram ships are the Gulente Recons, the Arazo and the Lachesis. These guys, they have a uh, I'm not going to tell you exactly what the ranges are. I don't know all of them. 
Uh, but as I said, it's good to have an idea of each each range, and it, of course, this matters. There's a big difference whether they're linked or not. It's uh, but uh, they they have. Um, uh, you should know that these that they have uh, doubled the scram range of a regular, um, or they can get double the the range of a regular. Um, uh, ship, right? So, for example, if the scam range is around 10k, they get 20k. Often they're fit with uh, faction scams, so that would go them, they would give them like 20 something, 24k, or it depends, 28 for the higher end uh, scams. And then on top of that, if you have links um, and they overheat that, yeah, you can imagine they can get up to 30 something scams. So, these are. Um, Good to um, to remember. Uh, another um, another dangerous ship is the uh, let me find it is the Keras, which is a, a, a T2 Galente electronic assault frigate, and this one also gets a, a slightly smaller um, bonus to scram range. Um, but it still gets uh, well. It can without links or anything. It has cram you up to 18k with it. Um, with links, it can go up to 20, what, 26, 28, 20 something, I think. And uh, not very common, but they can also fit faction scams and they can go get up 30k or something. So another thing to watch out for. Um, bonus. Um, Orthros and Garmer are also a bonus to uh, Scram, uh, where they will, all these ships are bonus to point range as well, but in this scenario the, the, the point range is not, uh, not a matter of you. Let me link the Garmer as well. So the Orthros and the Garmer, these are also have bonuses to Scram range and um, they have lower bonus to Scram range than uh, the KS and even lower than the Razos, and, but they still get like 50% uh, more uh, scram range. And since they're shiny, they all often fit uh, faction scams and they also link, so they can get, get around like 20k or 20 something even. Another, um, um, the Proteus can also get, a, um, it depends on how he's fit. Um, it can depends on what subsystem it has, but it can also get the bonus to scam range. I link it. So uh, the Proteus can get a uh, can get a uh, range to uh, range bonus to scam. And then you have a new class, or not a new class, but uh, since the recent. Uh, Re, the rebalancing and so on. Um, the these ships, uh, the heavy interdictors fix. They have become uh, more uh, more popular and they have become more common in uh, fights and uh, fleets. Uh, these are the four races of heavy interdictors. These guys, they they have a special module in the high slot uh, called the heavy or. I don't exactly warp disruption field generator is called, um, and they can fit if it's scripted that they can either have a bubble with it, but they can if it's scripted that they can uh, basically have a a long scram. Uh, depending on skills, they can uh, scram you up to thirty-seven point point k. Uh, that thing is not affected by links as far as I know. So um, 37.k is uh, basically a scram bubble around them. Everything that can that gets around, uh, you know, clo closer than that can get scrammed. And uh, there, it's very common that they have this uh, this uh, module uh, scripted for scram. So uh, basically, these are things that these are ships that you need to pay attention to and um, avoid getting in the scrum range. With experience and if you look, uh, you have to Google a bit and look look at them. Um, they have different yeah, ranges and so different fits, but 
uh, it's good to know their capabilities and how how much uh, how much you know how 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 much how 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 long the range they have. Um, it's also no good to know their mobility, for example, because the the Higgs they're very slow. The broadsword bonings, the broadsword forwards, they're very slow, right? Um, so you can once you, if you keep away from them, you find no, Proteus is also very slow, but and also the the Lachesis and Arasus are relatively slow. But for example, the Orthrus, the Garmer, and Especially the gun is very fast, and also Keras, since it's a figure, is you know, compared to other figures, is not very fast, but it's still very fast. So they have very good mobility, and they can come and chase you. So you need to pay a good attention, you know, pay pay attention to these guys. The idea is not to get scammed by them. Uh, okay, right. The next uh, group of ships that are very dangerous for you are the webbing ships. Um, and these, the most uh, popular, the most uh, are the uh, Minmatar Reckons, the Rapier and Hyena. Um, they can also, like, depending on what, uh, you know, on skills, on uh, if they have a faction web or not, and if they have links that can, they can web you up to 50 or even 70 kilometers uh, away. And um, yeah, again, it's the same thing. If you're, it's not as bad as the scam, since you can still maybe uh, burn a bit, you know, if the scam you can't burn at all with your Promote mod, if you get two webs on you, you still are going to get some if you overheat your um, microbe drive, but um, you, you'll be going very slow. So basically, two webs on you means that you're going like 10% of your speed or something. Um, so yeah. Or no, sorry, not 10%. It's like, well, divided by two. So for example, if you're, if you're, um, if your speed, let's say, is 500 or 6,000, for example, and the best case is overheated, then you'll be going with, one web will be going 3,000, another web will be going like 1,500. Well, right? this is a rough estimation. So um, that means like 15, 1,500 from 6,000, there's like almost 25, 30% reduction, or you're going like 25, uh, 30, um, percent uh, less or like no sorry you're going for 25 30 percent of your max speed right so that's still very bad for interceptor to go like 1000 500 meters per second is really bad because this can allow other things to catch up to you and so on uh, what you can do if you get web that range is better to just uh, try to either break the web if you're like at the edge of of web or try to warp off um if you're not pointed, because yeah, you can work out if you're not pointed. Um, so yeah, um, try to you know stay away and be aware at least of these guys and what they can do. Other webbing ships that can web you is the hyena, is the frigate version of these things. The hyena can get uh, yeah, 42, I think, or 50 kilometers. Maybe web with the uh, electronic assault thing, or no, 42, I think. Electronic assault thing gets five and uh, overheated, but with links and all that, they can go like um, higher up, like you go like seven, 60 something, um, 70 with links. Um, and then you have Yoshimo, uh, he has lower bonuses, or not as strong bonuses, but it he still gets double the web bonus. Um, and remember that th these things are get much better with links. You know? So if on a regular, on a regular web, you get like a few kilometers with links. Um, but with the bonuses, they get the links make much more difference. Like, right. And then you also have the Loki. Um, 
that's uh, the A3 cruiser that can also uh, have be fitted, have a subsystem for worms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, right. Um, yeah, there's some other like uh, Balgon and some other, but they're, they're more exotic. Um, next is newts, right? Newts are also very dangerous for interceptors. As I said, they don't directly um, stop you, but they turn off your cap. So you, no cap, no prop mode, and basically you're a sitting duck. Um, and again, the best thing to do if you get muted out, either you know, it depends how much what is on grid. You can, if you're orbiting uh, a battleship, for example. Um, if you're uh, on your ball and you get muted, you can double click in space and use your transver your uh, inertia, right? Because he mutes you out, but you're still running the micro for that, you know, until the end of the cycle. So you can double click in space away from him and get outside his uh, web range. See, sorry, his mute range and uh, point range, and uh, maybe recover some cap and stay still stay on grid. Or if you get muted, just Double making space to align to something in your direction and warp off. Uh, it's very dangerous to stay on grid uh, without cap if you know if there's stuff that can catch you or point you or whatever. Um, so first and more common or something is the battleships. The battleships um, are the class of ships that can fit uh, heavy energy neutralizers. Of course, there's some fits on other stuff that, you know, sacrifice a lot to fit this, but this, if you if you check the, this mod's um, range, it has a 20 kilometer optimal range with a 10 kilometer follow, and that means like 30 kilometers. Uh, you can add about that, so 30 something kilometer, they can still effectively um, need to. Now with this fall-off, I don't know exactly all the ranges. I used to know them uh, when they had like hard limit, but now they are less effective in fall-off. But still, a heavy neutralizer, uh, even in fall-off, can completely dry you out in an interceptor of frigate. Um, how effective is a NOS to keep your uh, cap? Uh, it's not even a matter of discussion. Remember what I said, that you should not be inside scram range. And, uh, and small NOS have, has a, a range of 5, 6K that puts you in scram range, that puts you in a position to die very fast. Uh, it's not an option for interceptors, unless you're like, as I said, tackling, there's only one ship and you're tackling it and you might have, you might be dual prop or somewhere, even not. Uh, but that's a spe that's a specific case scenario. So then, but it does an, an, uh, in a general tackle scenario with a big battle and stuff like that, where you're like doing what I'm talking about, uh, a nose won't help you at all because simply you won't be you won't be able to apply it. You want to be you want to be at least 20 kilometers from your target or from pretty much 20 kilometers from anything, um, preferably like you know 70 from a rapier or something. Um, but yeah, a nos will depends on how many how many newts the guy has, how uh, what size the newts have because he has small newts they cycle faster and they can meet you like more accurately. Heavy newts they have long cycle timer so you can regen cap in between and use your uh, maybe some mods before the next cycle hits. Um, but generally a nos you can you can keep up a scram with the nos if you cycle them properly, as in uh, start the NOS right before uh, you start the scram. So basically, you bet the scram gets the, the cap that is produced by the NOS. Um, and so, and may, basically, you don't want his new, new cycle to get be, before, you know, in between the NOS and the scram, because then you won't have cap. Um, but it can work uh, to keep your some of your mods like uh, your scram or or maybe in the conductor but it will not keep your uh, microbe drive but um, running but yeah again if you're in that range you probably scramble whatever so 
NOS is not an option generally for this kind of tackling that I'm talking about. Right, so remember that the heavy news, they can go up to 30 something K. Um, um, so, and all battleships can fit them. Uh, most battleships will fit them. Um, so that's, that's your thing. When you're tackling a battleship, beware of this. Uh, if you get muted out, double take coast out of, uh, of the new range and, uh, yeah, evaluate whether you're, uh, you want to stick and go back in or you want to walk off. Um, medium crew, medium newts, they have like, uh, let's say, a range in between 10, 14, 15k. Uh, generally in an inter of attack of frigate, you shouldn't be in that range anyway, so they're not, much of an issue here. Uh, if you get as that close, you're doing something wrong, and uh, yeah, you shouldn't be at 12, 13 care of anything. Um, from the battleships, the Armageddon linked is a bonus to range, and uh, that guy has uh, a 50% bonus to the range of the nudes, so if you uh, kind of compound that with the Heavy news means he has a bon- uh, like a 30k optimal, and then uh, he also has like a, yeah, I don't know, 15k full off, and that puts him effectively muting up to place around 50k. So watch out for that guy. Um, dedicated muting ships. Um, besides that are the um, Mar uh, Reckons, the Curse, and the Pilgrim. The curse has a better uh, range bonus to the uh, newts, so watch out for that. He can uh, he usually fits he usually fits medium newts, so that means like yeah, thirty something, forty k uh, newt power. But they are curse fits with heavy newts, and those guys reach up to eighty or hundred kilometers. But yeah. Then, then those are not that all common. And then you get the, the Sentinel, which is the frigate. This this guy doesn't have a very <coughs> this guy doesn't have a uh, very um, long range because he doesn't fit. Uh, he only he can only fit small small units, and but he still can hit up to like thirty k or something. So. Uh, and he's very mobile. Uh, he's a frigate, so he he can go pretty fast and can chase him. And with three, even with three uh, small nudes, he can uh, cap you dry in one cycle. Because he he also has a bonus to new uh, amount. He he drains double the amount of uh, of cap than a you know a regular small small nude does. So. With three newts, well, how they usually fit, uh, he can cap your dry in almost one cycle, and yeah, watch out for that guy. Right, so uh, these are uh, ships that uh, uh, are bonus to different things that are very dangerous for you as an interceptor or tackle on grid. So remember, guys, TPS, rapid light missiles, first of all, and then, yeah. Long scams, uh, Razula Kisses, Curious, uh, Hicks, Orthrus, Garmer, and also the other interceptors, because the interceptor, I forgot to mention, as you do, they also get the bonus to scam range, and they, with Link Saking, are like 15k scam range, and they can, they're very fast, they can chase you, scam you, and, you know, stop you, um, and let the rest of the fleet kill you. Um, Newts and Webs, uh, these are the well, and very few like 20, 20 ships uh, that are in absolute death for you. So watch out. <laughs> uh, any questions uh, so far? No questions. Okay. So um, well, we're nearing the two-hour mark. Sorry, guys. Uh, for the long uh, lesson, but um, I think it's better to do it in one go and uh, talk about these things. And I'll, uh, one of my 
purpose is with this thing is to actually record it and make it available for other guys who are uh, not here. So I don't, I'm, I'm not gonna do this again since, uh, yeah, there's no real point of me, um, uh, talking this talk twice since, uh, you can just listen to it. Uh, I'd rather do like, like uh, practical stuff, uh, and other stuff. So, um, let me cover uh, a few, um, uh, other things uh, quickly. These are more advanced things, but I'm not going to go into detail with that. I had a practical with some of them uh, last week uh, where we tried to practice this in more kind of detail, but uh, I'm going to mention them. First of all, um, you can... Defensive scramming, right? So you can uh, use your long scram range if you have a scram fit to peel off anything that might chase you, right? Uh, the same is applied in when you're kiting and you have a web, for example, in a regular ship, you can use your web, overheated web, and, and if you have links, you're, uh, it's even better and you're very lucky to, you know, if there's something gets dangerously close to you to get a scram on you, you can use your uh, overheated web to kind of web him and push him off and uh, not to get on you. You can use as an interceptor, if you overheat the scram, you get 13k, um, and then you can use it. Always, always have your scram pre overheated if you're not using it. Um, and even if you're using it and you're at a kind of a limit, you can uh, keep it overheated because it's uh, it hits pretty well. It doesn't burn your mods that bad. I mean, it doesn't take that much of uh, hit damage as opposed to the uh, a long point which uh, doesn't uh, uh, overheat that well um, and always keep your scam pre-overheated and then for example if you're orbiting whatever you see something coming too close to you uh, of course coupled with some manual piloting double clicking space away from him or whatever maneuver you do you can use your scam to uh, peel him off as you push him off if you scam him your extra extra scram range. Um, if he, you know, he might have a long scram as well, but if he's like an F T1 frigate, he doesn't have that bonus to scram. And the, those two three kilometers that you get, or with links four, uh, five, um, can uh, pay to your advantage, pay to advantage, and uh, stop his microbe dive before he can you know get close enough to to apply his own scram. Um, then again, another thing which is a good thing to keep in mind, uh, if there's other tacklers on the field, you can coordinate with them. If you're like the only point on something, you can call that, oh, I, I, I'm going to lose point on this one. Don't, don't stay, as I said, don't stay on grid to die. If, you, if you're seeing that you're dying or you're, there's, there's some danger or you're kind of uh, foreseeing that you'll hit danger, call on comms. Uh, and ask for someone to take secondary point, put secondary point, call secondary point or something, um, so you can pull range and get out or whatever. Um, as I said, there's two ways to, to get out. Usually you can pull range on field if you're not taking too damage or you're not in too much danger, so you just burn away from the fight to regen cap, regen armor, or simply well, get out, uh, get rid of DPS, so you can just warp off a line, or compare, you know, uh, combine. You start pulling range, and in the meantime, align to some celestia, and then warp off or something. So, um, don't stay on grid until you die, uh, like a hero. Warp off when you have to. Uh, but you know, if you see that you're, uh, you'll have to warp off if you can, uh, kind of foresee or uh, that you're going to have to work off, you can call on comms to get someone get secondary or so on. So good scouts are also, or good uh, tacklers are also doing, good pilots are also doing this like tag teaming or uh, the taking turns in uh, tackling the the primer or whatever and then they switching and so on so that, uh, you know, for example, if I'm in a caracal, I can project it very well and I can kill an interceptor or push him off and warp off, but there's if there's like two or three interceptors, like I'm shooting one, it has happened to me, I've died many times like that, uh, I'm shooting one, uh, and then when he's <laughs> he's close to dying, when he's taking a lot of damage, 
uh, his pulling range or warping off or pulling range outside my missile range and then I switch to the other ones and I pull the other one, push the other one off but in the meantime this guy would have maybe wrapped uh, some armor or whatever and comes in I have to lock him again and then push him off and so on and this buys them buys their own fleet time to actually come in or kill me or whatever so this kind of uh, ping pong is also a good skill to uh, to synchronize and uh, sync with you know sync and uh, work with your other fellow uh, tacklers uh, to keep point and survive. Um, yeah, tackling in big battles. I said it before, as I, I'll say it again. As I said, if there's a big battle uh, with uh, ships that can project damage and many ships that can project damage very well to you, like rapid like characters or whatever, uh, don't go in there to just point the primary because you'll simply die to DPS and that's it. It's better to kind of sit at the thing, stay safe and then going when they're bailing or when if the AFC calls you like he really needs something tackled or whatever. Uh, some uh, more advanced tackling maneuvers but these are mainly um, these are for people who also have scans fitted and uh, my favorite interceptors are uh, the Malediction and the Stiletto since they can fit uh, good well, tanks and also fit a scram. Uh, the Stiletto is specifically good in my opinion for Uni because the Uni has an SRP that requires a buffer, uh, a shield buffer on the interceptors and then the Stiletto has enough slots to fit the shield buffer like a shield extender. Uh, microbe drive and then fit a long point and a scram. Always fit T2 scram and T2 point. Because of the, it, it's a pity not to take advantage of the bonuses there. Um, right. Interceptors, talking about interceptors and tackle frigates in general, if your role is to tackle and scout, don't even bother, uh, fitting guns. Uh, fit them only if you have, like, spare fitting. Um, I'd rather have, you know, be, have you fitted for, uh, tank and speed and agility rather than actually uh, fit like uh, guns to do like 30 or 50 or 70 DPS, which for, compared to the DPS of a full fleet is not that important. Okay. Uh, five minutes. Few more, few more uh, words about some more advanced, uh, maneuvers, as I said, or techniques that involves scams is first is scram screening what I call it is like for example in small gangs you have some slower ships like battleships for example um, behind the fleet and then they're shooting some uh, they're fighting some uh, uh, fleet or enemy fleet and then there's some some guys enemy guys coming, like fast guys coming towards your uh, battleships or your slower ships that are behind. What you can do as an interceptor, but this, again, this is very advanced stuff. This is like, this is stuff that like the the, the, the really good pilots or small gang and 80 pilots do, like Chester and all those guys. Um, for example, basically use the interceptor, you keep your interceptor, like stay with between you, your fleet and the other fleet and kind of go in and scram the, the enemies that are burning to for your uh, for your battleships, for example, whatever you have behind, or for example, if one of them is scrammed or something, you can go and counter scram the scrammer, like the intercept or whatever, and maybe allow the other guy to slow boat or pull range and get out your your friendly. Uh, so this is like the way to use uh, your scram to de- kind of protect your fleet or def- defensively. Uh, you can also, as I said, use your scram to protect yourself if there's something chasing you. Um, another, let's say, task or uh, another thing, useful thing that uh, tacklers should know how to do or uh, if they have scams is uh, stopping MGD, MJDing uh, ships. So by, for example, by default, as I said, you should not get in scam range. Um, but for example, you're tackling a battle cruiser, you're long pointing it, you can look at it uh, you know, look at it as a, with the look at button or someone else looks at it and calls it whatever. And uh, there's an animation of the MJD. And when when someone calls that or you're, you notice that you delve in 
and you can get scram on him so you stop him from MJDing and getting out of outside the point range and warping off, right? Uh, again, this is like in if you can afford it, there's like ten tackles around him, don't do that of course. Um and here comes the the most important and most advanced uh, maneuver is scram pass, what they call scram pass. Um, and this is scram pass is basically uh, you burn at an angle towards the enemy ship if he's moving or not moving. Uh, if he's moving forwards, it's harder. If he's not moving, it's easier. For example, MJD battle cruisers are not that moving that much or they're not very fast, so you can do it easily. But basically, you're burning. Uh, at the enemy, you're pointing in front of him, and some and some point you want to scram him, either to prevent his MJD from jump, from uh, you know activating, or you want to slow him down, uh, so to allow your ship, your fleet to catch up to him and kill him, or uh, whatever, or allow you stop him to like slow him down so he doesn't reach your fleet or whatever. Uh, so you burn at him and scram him, right? But you do this at an angle. You don't go straight at him at zero, scram him, because he will be able to scram you back and uh, kill you. What you do is burn at him at an angle. Imagine like a, a imagine like a bubble or a sphere around him at 10, 10 or 12k, uh, which is your uh, your overheat scram range is 13k. So if you you can use your tactical over, overlay to see that if you hover over your scram you will see a bubble around your ship. That's actually the range you can use your scram. And by double clicking in space and burning at an angle towards him, so basically you go tangent to that bubble around, or he goes tangent to that bubble around you, or whatever, however, however you want to see it, see it, you go tangent to his bubble, to his 10, 12k bubble around him. Um, and then double click, so you go like that, like 10, 20, 12k from him and scram him once, you basically activate your scram once and then keep burning and get out. So even if he manages, of course, you only, it's difficult to get exactly 10, 12k, you might actually get the closest like 8, 7, 8k or sometimes you miss it. It takes a bit of practice and experience, but uh, even most often or often, most often if you do this right, even if you get scrammed or even webbed by him, your momentum will carry you outside of his scram range, right? So if you're going burning at, at this angle, like 4k a second, he scrams you, uh, basically you're 8 or 9k from him, he overheats his scram, he, he scrams you, um, but if you're like burning away from him at an angle, right? You're not burning straight at him, basically then you're like passing outside and then you're starting pulling range and uh, getting outside his scram range uh, from your momentum. And then it's very important to reactivate and maybe even pre-overheat once you, while you're scrammed, pre-overheat your micro that And then when you're getting, when you coast it out of scram, of this scram range, you can reactivate your micro that and continue orbiting and pointing and then rinse and repeat this thing. This, uh, and you can do the same thing like MJD, stopping ships to, from MJD is like one a particular application of this scram pass, but there's many others. Um, right. So these are like very advanced techniques that, I, as I said, or uh, require a lot of good uh, experience um, and practice with manual piloting and uh, synchronizing. But uh, once you, if you master, if you master these things, are very very useful at catching kiting stuff that can kill you and uh, allow your fleet to catch up or stuff like that. So. Uh, this is in like a few words about them. We, we last week we had a practical uh, kind of exercising exactly this. Uh, I think this was all that I had to talk about, um, or at least that I could think to talk about. Probably like right after this class, I'll have like I'll get like five more ideas that I should I should have said that or that. But um, so far, I think this is it. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments. Uh, no comments or questions. Everyone is bored to death and like sitting on the chairs in agony.
And I guess the question is, should we practice jumping through gate camps and seeing if we can survive? Uh, <laughs> well, um, you can, if you want to practice that, you can have some, some uh, a fellow with a, I don't know, insta looking pressure or something, and uh, you can just sit there and try to um, block you at least. Um, you can fit some buffer on your, uh, if you fit some buffer on your ship, like a shield, medium shield extender or something, he can even shoot at you without uh, immediate danger of popping you. So uh, there are ways to, to practice that, but I, yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it just going into a gate and just to practice it. So you will train it up in those. You'll get uh, you'll get plenty plenty of practice anyways. Uh, I mean, I I go through gate camps uh, very often while I'm roaming so solo and yeah, sometimes I buy. It depends of of course like what what you're flying. If you're flying a cruiser and jumping into a gate camp, there's not a lot you can do. Uh, sorry, what was that? Um, who who spoke Dagen or who was that? Jonathan, yeah, go, go ahead. Uh, worth training up for, for interceptors. I'd say interceptor is a very useful ship, uh, even if you don't uh, necessarily um, Scout, you know, like are dedicated to scout. They're very good go uh, traveling sh traveling ships, um, as well, and they're very good. Like it's very handy to have an interceptor so you can go tackle something. Or if you're a PvP oriented uh, character, I'd say they're good good train. Uh, and there's not much to like. At some point, you'll have to train T2 uh, frigates, and training into interceptors is uh, is not a big train from there. Uh, yeah. However, if you want to do, I mean, if you like this type of uh, piloting and you well, kind of like the idea of doing scouting and so on for fits and tackling and so on, uh, I'd say uh, it's a very, yeah, as I said, interceptors are much, much better than the other frigates. Um, and it is worth training that interceptor um uh, skill to four or even five. Um, basically, uh, if you look at the interceptor, um, just a second, at the interceptor's bonuses, he gets um, um, he gets fifteen reduction to micro drive signature radius penalty. So basically that's like 15 less signature um, per level. So that means that translates into 15 less damage taken from bigger guns, bigger than frigate guns, uh, which is enormous, right? So one level gets you 15 less damage basically. So altogether, um, level, interceptor level five, it takes um, 75 less um, less damage than uh, than a T1 frigate, which is a lot. Basically, you you basically that almost doubles your tank com uh, composed with the uh, speed as well. Um, so I think that's uh, the let's say the the jump from interceptor four to interceptor five is worth it mostly for that the. The warp disruptor range and scam is also useful, um, and it gets much more useful with links as well. But that is really useful. Of course, interceptors five is I don't know how long this 